Ukraine Today is joined by Rudy Luchman, Deputy Representative of the UNICEF Office in Ukraine. Rudy, many thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Rudy, with, um, I understand that UNICEF is obviously has a long presence in Ukraine, but uh, with the war raging in eastern Ukraine, um, the amount of work uh, must have increased for you significantly. There are more than 5 million affected people, uh, out of which uh, more than 1.7 million are children. How much of uh, increase of work you have right now? Well, that's correct. I mean, you would need to know that UNICEF has been in Ukraine ever since 1991, so we've been here before the crisis. Uh, children's needs are those ones which are, you know, the ones which are most vulnerable and most marginalized, children living on the street, children living in institutions, children in conflict with the law. So that has always been UNICEF's program here in Ukraine. We're very committed to defend children's rights. Um, and of course, the, the war has significantly blown out of proportion our presence here and our program. Uh, you were mentioning 5 million people affected, that's absolutely correct. There are 1.3 million displaced people, out of which we say it's a roughly around 160,000 children. Um, and those children are in, in dire need. I mean, they have lost everything. They have uh, lost their livelihoods, they have lost their homes, they have lost their toys. And children are affected by that. Children are suffering differently than adults. Um, we are particularly concerned about you know, children's psychosocial situation, psychological uh, state of mind. Uh, we know from the surveys we've, uh, we've done that about 50% of them are affected by war trauma. Uh, about 10% of them have actually witnessed death by, during the displacement. And we can say that up to today we have already more than 20,000 children. Uh, we've extended psychosocial assistance through our teams which are working in the field. Uh, more than 20,000 children that we have reached and we continue to do that through the psychologists, through the teachers we are working with, through the government, non-government organizations we are working with. We will definitely continue to do that. Uh, on top of that, UNICEF has been delivering hygiene kits. More than 40,000 uh, people have benefited from those hygiene kits. And you can imagine if you are displaced with little children, you know, you think of diapers, you think of washing powder. All these kind of things UNICEF has procured and has delivered. As I said, more than 40,000 people have actually benefited from that. And we'll, again, we'll continue to do that. Um, but it's also important to say that you know, the actual humanitarian need you know, inside the non-government controlled areas is also severe and significant. Well, I understand that you have a, a permanent or a temporary uh, offices in eastern Ukraine, uh, including uh, in uh, non-government controlled areas. Um, how easy it is for your offices to, to work in, uh, in, the war, in the war zone, in the war area? Well, look, UNICEF is an organization that works in war areas and other catastrophe areas worldwide. So for us, it, this comes as a, as a natural you know, kind of part of our mandate. Um, as you said, we have opened offices in Kharkiv, Mariupol, in uh, Kramatorsk, uh, and we have a small office in, in Dnepropetrovsk as well. Uh, this is mainly to take care of those ones which have been displaced or those ones, you know, in those areas where rehabilitation is happening, like Kramatorsk. But inside the non-government controlled territories, it's a completely different uh, ball game. Obviously, it, this is much more difficult. Security is an issue. Uh, we have to take care of our staff as well. Our office in Donetsk is headed by an international, uh, just to make sure we, have, uh, we, have, we are maintaining our neutrality and, uh, in this conflict. I think this is very, very important because for us, the humanitarian needs, uh, anything that relates to children's rights is of, of, the, of the utmost importance. Well, you mentioned that um, a lot of children have um, suffered psycholo have psychological traumas because of living in the territory where the war is raging right now, because of uh, witnessing the atrocities, of witnessing death. Um, how is UNICEF helping them? What uh, UNICEF and other international organizations can do to help such children? There are a couple of inroads for that. And as I said, UNICEF is an organization which has enormous experience in this. Um, first of all, most children do go to school. So through schools, through the teachers, you get a lot of children that are actually affected. Um, by training teachers, by making them aware of the symptoms, by also making them aware of the way that they can help, you're already helping, you're reaching a lot of children. But that is just the, you know, the, the broad coverage, if you will. 
I think what is also very important is to identify those children which really do show significant symptoms of trauma and of stress and of distress and to ex you know, elevate that to school psychologists, to psychologists that are working with non-government organizations. And this is where we come in and this is where we train those psychologists, those teachers in order to really reach a maximum or broad and scope of children. And this is how we come up to 20,000 and counting. Well, um, uh, I understand that recently you have been, uh, you yourself have been in eastern Ukraine uh, during one of your uh, field trips. How would you assess the current situation, uh, the current humanitarian situation in eastern Ukraine, specifically in relation to children? Yeah, well, I tell you something. The reason why I traveled that trip that you referred to last week is because the, uh, the 1st of June was International Children's Day. And UNICEF um, decided to celebrate uh, International Children's Day this time around in Sviatogorsk. Uh, so we had uh, 3,000 children, which are IDP children, which are living still in Sviatogorsk in uh, collective accommodations, in summer camps, in hostels, uh, that we invited to, to participate uh, in that celebration. And I think, you know, if I look back into it, you know, I think for one day at least we were able to, to, to draw a smile on, on, on children's faces and to give them some, some opportunity to play and to relax. So I think that was really a good idea to do that. But Maybe what I want to say, what's maybe even more important, is that we had a really massive press coverage. So it was reported all over the place that UNICEF actually went there to celebrate with the children from the IDPs, from the displaced communities. It's just really to draw the to draw the international attention uh, to children that are that are left behind. And I think you know, if you look at the news today, you know, nobody really talks about you know children being displaced inside Ukraine. You know, it's the politics which covers the. Uh, the media all of the time. I think it's important really to go back and say children's rights are being violated here and children are suffering and we as the international community have to speak out and I think UNICEF would really like to take the lead and speak out and say children's rights need to be defended especially in wartime and especially as it relates now to eastern Ukraine. When UNICEF staff uh, on the ground in eastern Ukraine are talking to children, are talking to the children who are affected by, by this war, what are you hearing from them? Uh, what messages do you get from the children in eastern Ukraine? Well, Volodymyr, you, you get you get really you get really difficult difficult stories sometimes to hear. You know, if you have if you have you know five or six year old girls, you know, talking about you know that they saw you know dead people or that a relative like an aunt or an uncle were killed and, and shot. You know that really crawls under your under your skin. You know, I talked. I talked. I remember I talked to a teenage girl um, in in Eastern Ukraine, and I asked, "So, what about your parents? You know, where are they?" And they said, "You know, I lost my mom and my dad." And that just came to me like I didn't know what to say. You know, this is this can be. You know, this is when you really feel. You know, that that's, this is real, man. This is this is really this is really getting under your skin, and I think. As I can speak for myself, I think I can speak on behalf of all UNICEF staff here in Ukraine. You know, this is really what motivates us to continue doing what we are doing because I think it's really important. Rudy, and my final question: um, What is UNICEF's view on the immediate needs of the children affected by the war in eastern Ukraine? What is the most urgent right now? Well, I mean, look, I mean, you look at the press, you look what happened last week, we had an escalation of the fighting last week. What is most important to me, and I have to say that, um, I have to say this, um, a lot of water infrastructure has been destroyed, unfortunately, over the last uh, couple of, uh, of days uh, during the fighting that escalated, as we all know, uh, last week. Um, there are hundreds of thousands of people affected. They don't have access to running, to running water. We have to get in and fix this kind of water infrastructure, which was destroyed. Uh, but we also have to distribute drinking water to those parts of the population which are affected. They are displaced, and there are those ones living along the front line where the fighting still takes place up to today. It's an incredibly difficult situation, and the summer is now just about to come. It's actually already here. Um, we, today we have 30 degrees, and you know, waterborne diseases like diarrhea and worse can happen. And we have to make sure that now, really, with all urgency, actually, my team is just ready, getting ready today uh, to go to Mariupol and to go uh, to those places and to witness and to inspect as far as possible to make sure that we can get the water system back on track so that we prevent the worst from happening as the temperatures go up.
Well, let's hope that um, UNICEF and also other international organizations and as well as Ukrainian government will manage to bring water to, to, to the people affected in East Ukraine. Uh, Rudy, many thanks for talking to us. This was Volodymyr Sulhub for Ukraine Today together with Mr. Rudy Luchman, Deputy Representative of UNICEF Office in Ukraine. Thank you for watching us.